Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus. By the end of the next two videos, we'll have a simple heads-up display, as you can see in the top left and bottom left, which will show our current level, the wave we're on, and in the bottom left it'll show our health and our ammo. This one took a little longer than I was expecting, so I've divided it up between two videos. In the first video, we'll cover the level and the wave, which are a little bit easier. And then once we're in the swing of things, in the second part, we'll cover health and ammo. Okay, let's start by adding a new node. And we're going to add a, a basic control node here. And let's call that HUD. That's going to be our heads-up display, or at least it'll contain everything in our heads-up display. And in the layout here at the top, let's do a full rectangle. It'll fill up the whole area here. And underneath that, we're going to add a label. So let's uh, add a child node. And here, we, let's look up label. So we're going to have two labels, one of them. Let's call this one our level label. And we'll duplicate it. And we'll call this one our level value. So for each piece of data I want to display on the heads up display, we'll use this pattern. One will be the label. So for example, this will just say level with a colon and then a space. And then the value will be the actual number or data that we're going to display. Okay, so let's start by organizing this a little bit because right now they're overlapping. Let's uh, add some sort of container here. And I think what I want is a grid container. And we'll put these two inside the grid container. And on the grid container here, let's make let's make there be two columns. So it's going to line up like this, level and then value. Select both of these and we'll go control D to duplicate them. And then this one, instead of level label, I'm going to call it wave label and this will be wave value. And you should see here in the grid container, they're going to go down into the next row because there are only two columns. And for wave, let's change this to say wave. I'm going to do it in all caps. There we go. And let's just play and make sure that shows up in the top of our screen. It's probably going to be tiny. And uh, there it is. Yeah. And it's also way, way crammed in the corner. So in our, our full rect container, Let's add some margins here so it's not so right close to the edge. And I think I liked uh, 20 pixels. So 20, there we go, top 20. And the, the right would be negative 20 and the bottom will be negative 20 as well. So we have a bit of a margin and then it should look a little nicer there. The text is really small for these labels. Now we could go and update the fonts here, but I don't wanna do that with all our labels. We're gonna, let's actually just create a theme for our heads up display. And so every control node, any green node underneath that should use the themes font by default. So heads up display here, we'll go under theme and then specter. Let's create a new theme. I'm gonna click it down here and we can get a little preview of all the little widgets and stuff. I'm gonna save this theme here. We'll make it unique and then we can save it. Um, and I'm gonna save it in a new folder we'll call heads up display HUD and then in there we can just call it just theme actually I'm gonna call it HUD HUD theme and let's change the default font so we're gonna do a new dynamic font here which is nothing we'll click on that and then here we need to drop a font file so I found a font I liked for this game called righteous on Google fonts Make your way over to Google Fonts and you'll find it here righteous. I'm not sure why. I think it's because the A almost looked like our character and our enemies, the pill here. So you can just take the default style here of righteous and I'm going to download that and save that into my game. And I'm going to save it right into the HUD folder. There we go. And if I go into this HUD folder here, there it is. I it downloaded as a zip file, so I'm going to right click and extract it here. So now we have the righteous font, it's got the font license, and then it's got the font itself, a true type font. Okay, so we can go back to our game, and hopefully that appeared, yep, appeared up in our My File System here. So I'm going to go to righteous, and I'm going to drag that righteous font over into the font data. 
Oh, looks like it's appearing. That's good. Let's, uh, in the settings here, we're going to change the size to, I'm going to use 26. I like that size for our game. I'm also going to save this font. Let's save that here. I'll save it in the heads up display and I'm just going to call it, I'm going to call it righteous. We can say righteous font and then I'm just going to go uh, dash 26 for the size in case we want to use that somewhere else or we just have it as a separate resource. Okay, so now we have, yeah, that looks good and it matches too, right? Now we want to update these values and we're going to do that in our HUD. So let's add a script here. And I think I want to save this in the HUD folder. HUD.GD sounds good. So we'll need some variables. And these will be some references to our different label values here, our different values. So we'll have, let's have level. And we'll have that equal to the level value. And we'll have one for wave. And we'll set that equal to our wave value. We're also going to create one for our health. And we're going to create one for our ammo remaining. And these are going to get progressively a little bit harder or at least have to add a, an additional step each way. The easiest one is going to be level, which we're going to be able to do directly from the game's main script. The wave we're going to have to do maybe with a signal, uh, same with the health, and the ammo we're going to have to go right from the gun, send a couple signals, propagate up through the gun controller, and then the head can read it from there. So let's start with the easiest one, which is going to be the level. So our level is currently updated in the game script itself. And where do we do that? We, right here, new level. We're going to add one to the level. So every time we add one to the level, let's go get that HUD. And we're going to call a method on it that doesn't exist yet. Let's just call it update level. And we'll pass it the current level. And it can use that to update the label here. So let's go back to the HUD script create a new function called update level I guess we can just call it current level this says level here but this is actually a level label node might be a little bit confusing there okay so how do we update the text we're going to go level dot text and we're going to set that equal to the current level now current level isn't a string it's going to be a number so we'll Pass that to a string and that should work let's see what we get here okay it's starting on level zero which we're not on and when we finish the first wave it's updating at least no is it updating let's see if it updates okay hey look we <laughs> it updated when we finished the level that's great so it doesn't start at the correct level let's fix that up we'll go back up to the game script um, so we're probably going to going to want to call that same update level on our HUD in the ready method. So at, when the game starts, it shows us the correct level as well. After we finish the game, because currently the way I have it set it up, we're on. Um, there are only three levels, zero, one and two, and we start on level two. So a couple things there. This is a zero index, and in our game, we don't want to start on level zero. We want to start on level one. So let's go into our HUD script, and we'll just always add one here so it's not zero indexed. And then as well, in our game, we only want to update the level if you haven't won the game. So we're actually going to do it inside our if statement here. So that way when you win the game, it'll still show you the last level. It won't go up to uh, another additional level that doesn't exist. Okay, so we can see it. Let's test a level transition. We'll go back into our game in the inspector. And I'm just going to start on level... Let's go back and start on level 0. And so we can see. So it says there, good, it says level 1. So it's not 0 index anymore. It's showing the actual level 1. And then when I defeat all these baddies, we should go to level 2. Good. And then... Why don't I just finish this off and make sure on level three, it actually ends. There we go. I won. Stayed on level three. It looks like all that's working. Okay, so we have our level labels working. Next, let's do the spawner. So 
you can imagine we're going to have a function like this that's going to do the same thing but unfortunately the game itself doesn't control the waves so instead we're going to have to go and somehow connect this to our spawner and we don't really want a node directly accessing methods in a sibling node. Generally, nodes should only directly manipulate child nodes. And if it wants to communicate with nodes outside of itself, then we should be using signals for that. So let's go to the spawner script here and let's add a new signal. So there is a signal here, level complete. Let's add a new signal called wave complete. Actually, we're going to call this wave update because that's all it's going to do is it's going to send the current wave information in the signal every time we reach a new wave. And then we probably want to do that anytime we start the next wave here. So after we increment the wave, we'll emit the signal. And we're going to emit the, scroll way down there, wave update signal. And we want to pass a parameter here. We want to pass the current wave number with the signal. And save that and now if I go over into the node for the got to click the spawner here and there's my wave update signal so I'm going to connect that with our HUD and it's going to be on spawner wave update there we go now we're actually going to receive the signal is sending us some data so let's get that data which is going to be the current wave and we can just change all our level to wave so the wave text is going to be the current wave and I don't know waves zero indexed let's see how it works is that all we need to do um, hmm, interesting so invalid set index text on base nil so it's saying the way we're trying to set text on something that doesn't exist yet which means this the wave value node here hasn't been initialized yet when this function, this signal is received and this function is being run the first time. So let's go take a look why that is happening. So this runs, this signal is emitted in the start next wave method. However, start next wave is run in the ready method of the spawner. So that means the spawner could be ready before our HUD has completed before all the children of our HUD, before all these nodes are ready, which means the spawner, the node is ready, it starts running its ready method, it's emitting a signal, the HUD is receiving the signal, but these aren't ready yet. So we need to be able to handle that. We need to kind of reorganize this so that we know all the nodes are ready before it starts sending this signal that's going to be retrieved over here. So the way to do that is to move any of these problem methods into the game's ready method. Because a parent's ready method will only be called once all of its children are ready. So in the game's ready method, we know the spawner's ready, the HUD and all its children are ready. So that's where we need to do it. Uh, so we're going to move this start next wave, this initial call to start next wave. We're going to move it into the game ready method here. So do we have a reference to the spawner yet? We don't. So we will go spawner and then we'll just call start next wave. And I think that should fix our problem. Okay, we're not crashing. It says wave one. Good news. We kill this guy. We should go to wave two. We do not. Oh, we do. We what? That seemed delayed. Level two wave one. That's a good sign. Now we're on wave two. Was it just delayed there? And we only have two waves, so now we should go back to level three, wave one. Oh yeah, it's working. Okay, seems to be working well. Um, we may end up with that same problem. Let's just check that we're not. Um, the same problem with the level, that when a level's complete, we're still updating the HUD which we probably don't want to do because at the very last level when we win, it like say we only have three waves, or in our case we actually only have two waves. So instead of just staying at wave two, it'll jump to wave three, which doesn't exist. So similar to how we did with the level, I'm only going to update the HUD if we haven't passed the last wave.